Very good. So I'm Patty Farmer from the Center for Fern Calling, and I want to welcome you to our third day of Life After College. This is the first session today. Be sure, those of you that are uh, attending three or more, to get your uh, passport stamped so you can get one of these great portfolios at the uh, end of the week. Um, and also, I want to encourage everybody to make sure you signed in because it's a good way for us to keep track. And there also um, will be emailing you uh, Daniel Howitt's PowerPoint. So Dan is going to introduce himself. I think he probably is a familiar face since he um, we are lucky enough to have him here at SPU. And we are super excited for this presentation on LinkedIn. And he can really give you some practical tips, not only how to utilize LinkedIn, but how to create a really awesome profile that presents yourself in a really professional way out, whether you're looking for an internship, a job, or um, thinking about going to grad school. Thank you. Daniel. Hey, thank you, Patty. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. I'm jazzed to be here for Senior Week talking about LinkedIn. And I love talking about LinkedIn because LinkedIn is just a tool for building relationships. And um, I was in the class, I see some of you from yesterday. It's a, a topic I'm passionate about. How do you build professional relationships? So I'm going to give a quick intro. We're going to, I'm going to give you a little bit of context to why I think LinkedIn is valuable. And then we're going to jump into the site, spend most of our time in LinkedIn. I'm going to show you some examples of what I think are really good profiles and give you a sense of what you should kind of be aiming towards. And then we'll spend some time with what I think are the most important features of the site. I'm going to teach you how to hunt with LinkedIn. So by way of introduction, um, I work here at Seattle Pacific University. I did my master's degree in industrial organizational psychology. I apparently loved it so much I came back for more punishment. And I'm doing my doctorate degree in the same topic as well. And when I was here, I actually got the chance to work with Patty in the Career Center and really jumped into using LinkedIn for myself, both in recruiting. I worked in recruiting at Microsoft, um, both in helping students. And then when I came back to this job, um, I work with our one-year Master of Arts in management. So I'm going to give a quick shameless plug for that. I'm going to jump in. If any of you are interested, come find me, chat, chat with me about it afterwards. I'll get you info. Um, but essentially, it's a program where we actually work to place the students into jobs. And so when I started here, they told me, your job is to make sure that everybody lands a job at the end of the program. I thought, whoa, OK, that's intense. And so because of that, I use, I live in LinkedIn. It's pretty much open on my desktop constantly. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you about today is how I is kind of some, I think, the insider secrets of how to use LinkedIn. And I'll really show you how recruiters use LinkedIn, which will teach you how to be found by folks as well. Uh, but come the spring quarter for my students, here's what's going to happen. They're going to send me job leads or I'll see job opportunities. And I am literally going to be finding managers, recruiters via LinkedIn. And I'm going to be reaching out to them directly to get my students interviews and get hired. So when I say I live in LinkedIn, I literally live in LinkedIn. It's, it's, uh, it's like water to me. So if you're interested in the, the one-year program, I won't go too much into it, but it's a one-year degree, get a business degree, study abroad in China and India, get a good job, lots of fun stuff. So here's my, uh, um, uh, my objectives for you. I had a class a long time ago where the professor said, a good teacher always tells you what you're going to get out of the class. So I'm hoping that um, you'll learn the difference between job searching and networking today. I'm hoping you'll leave convicted that networking can change the world. I know that's kind of audacious, but it's my goal. Uh, hopefully you understand the power of networking and how to leverage LinkedIn to help you do that. And if I bumped you into you in a week on campus and I'll see a lot of you, I hope you shake my hand and say, hey, I've created an awesome LinkedIn profile. Come check it out. And I'll say, yes. And I've hoped you've joined the, uh, not the IO group, I've hoped you've joined the SPU alumni group and the SPU School of Business group, which you can join if you're not a business student. Um, and I hope you add everyone you know on LinkedIn, except for ex-girlfriends and boyfriends. That's kind of my rule of thumb. You, you don't have to add them. Um, and uh, from six months from now, I hope you are just doing tons of informational interviews. If I bumped you in six months, I'd hope you'd say, I've done 12 informational interviews because I went to your session. And I'll say, wow, I should quit my job because I have made all the impact in the world I need on your life. And my mission in life is accomplished. I'm using hyperbole today. Um, and I hope you know how to, you, you'll be inspired to generously use your network to serve other people. So why does LinkedIn work? I actually need to change this slide. Every time I do this uh, presentation, it changes. But there's, there's over 336 million people on LinkedIn from all sorts of countries. And here's the way, here's why LinkedIn works. 
LinkedIn works because it's built on relationships, the power of people. Back in the old days, if I wanted to find a particular person, I might go to folks and say, do you know somebody who does this? Do you know somebody who does this? And I'd eventually get there. LinkedIn just makes it incredibly easy. And so it's built on relational principles. They've been around as long as humans. I'll give a quick example. I would put Patty on the spot. I was here an intern years ago and saying, I want to work in a career center. And she said, great. I know this woman who runs a career center at a college across the lake. Excellent. She connects me to that person, and that person hires me. And so that's why, that's why LinkedIn works. It's built on those relational principles of who do you know, who do they know, and who do they know, right? LinkedIn just makes it easy to find that person in the snap without having to go through all the work. Why does networking matter? The objective of networking is to build relationships, gather information, and obtain referrals. That's really what it comes down to. But the underlying current is to build relationships to serve other people. Um, I shared this in a class yesterday. I, I love LinkedIn as a tool, um, but something I saw a couple years back made me want to throw up. I got this email to myself from LinkedIn saying, encouraging me to add people to my network. And it said, add connections, build your empire, reap the rewards. And I thought, that is so gross. That just reeks of using people. So as we talk about LinkedIn today, I love the site. It's a brilliant invention. But I don't agree with that premise. I think you should use LinkedIn to build relationships, not contacts, because last time I checked, they're people. Um, build relationships, find ways to serve them, and use those relationships to help make the world a better place. Of course, it's going to benefit you. And that's OK. It takes humility to ask for help. But that's what the premise I want to talk about today. So if you, if you take away from this, I can use LinkedIn to find all these people and get where I want to go, you kind of got it, but you really didn't. If you use LinkedIn, say, LinkedIn and say, I can use this to do that, but also to create a platform of relationships to serve other people, that is awesome. So I'll, I'll sprinkle some examples in as I go through. So let me go to the site. We'll spend most of our time here today. LinkedIn is, you know, it's, some people joke it's like the Facebook of the professional world, if you will, except it's not like Facebook. Um, you don't have to put up tons of photos. You don't even have to um, spend all that time posting things all the time. Really, what it comes down to is just a platform to connect with people. So when you log in, you've got your little profile, you've got your little um, you know, um, home page here. I don't use this too much, but sometimes I'll scroll through. Whoops. And, um, Sometimes I'll scroll through and just see, hey, look, uh, Beth is hiring an associate in project leadership at Point B. Hey, Point B is a top consulting firm in the area. A lot of my students would love to work there. So I might drop Beth a note and say, Beth, that's fantastic. I've got a student from Phoenix. By the way, this is how you can use LinkedIn to help people. I've got a student who's here from Phoenix, and I know she would love to go into that type of consulting. Uh, let's have a quick conversation. love to send her your way. Right? So I'll, I'll look through the, the headings just periodically, see if there's anything interesting. It's a nice way to catch up with people. You'll see when people change jobs, send them a congratulatory note, um, whatever have you. But that's not the, that, that's not the basics of LinkedIn. Um, so we'll get to some of the, the, main, the main pieces. But let me show you uh, uh, some profiles. I, I'm going to start with my profile, not because I just want to show off my profile, but because I've put a lot of work into it, and I think you can pick a couple things up. And then I'll show you some folks I've worked with and some, some, what some of their profiles look like. So first thing, when you look at your profile, and side note, if you want to have a really killer profile, go talk to someone in the Career Center. Get a really good resume written. If you have a really good resume, it's pretty easy to make a nice profile. So shameless plug for Patty and her crew. Um, I've got a professional picture. It doesn't have, even have to be professional. Just make sure it's not the Nokia phone from a decade and a half ago with your buddy's shaky hand. You know, make a picture that somebody can recognize so that, let's say, a guest speaker comes to class and you connect with them and you go, I'd love to do what they do one day. And you follow up with them on LinkedIn and you talk to them after class, but you know, they're busy, they forget people. If they have a picture they can't recognize, they go, who is that person? I don't know who they are. I've got a buddy who mountain bikes and he's got this picture. It's cool background, mountain, and a mountain bike, and some dude in the distance. It's apparently him, but I have no clue. So I would have no idea to know if that was the person that I met and I should connect with. I often will get random connections. And if I don't know the person, uh, like this individual, I'm just going to deny them. Because 
I want to have people in my network who know me. So if they reached out to me and said, hey, I want to connect to Patty Farmer. She's awesome. I'll say, yeah, she is awesome. But I don't know you, so I don't really, I don't feel comfortable connecting to somebody I trust. So I only keep people I trust in my network. If you're an SP student, I trust you, as long as you've chatted with me. I, give, I infer SP trust. But I've got a picture so people can recognize who I am. Got your name. I've got a little ha headline. This is kind of my mission statement of developing people and organizations to meet their full potential. Um, other folks I know will put uh, a heading of what, their, of what their job is, or they'll say, you know, um, communication students, passionate about public relations, or something, just something kind of telling people who you are. It's the first thing people see. So a nice little headline. You go down a little bit, you'll notice my LinkedIn link. It's a vanity URL. It says linkedin.com slash Daniel Halleck. Some people will have uh, a URL that says linkedin.com slash pound forward slash question mark, whatever have you. This is nice because on my resume, top, right next to my phone number, my address, I've got my LinkedIn link. So if I send my resume to somebody, they can actually go over to my LinkedIn profile and get a little bit more about who I am professionally rather than just my experience. They can see my recommendations, my portfolio, additional things we'll see in a second. So that's nice. Also, in my email signature, which y'all should have, and many of you do, that will be right there as well. So when I exchange emails with somebody, maybe you're, you're part of a club here and you bring a guest speaker in, um, you exchange emails, they'll see your LinkedIn profile and they'll come and click on it. When I was in school and I was um, looking for my first job coming out, I was amazed at how often people would click on my LinkedIn profile or click on my portfolio and they would know things about me before I came in. So even if you're a student, they like to know who you are. So make it a nice vanity URL you can plaster the internet with. Then I have a summary, and we'll see some of the sample summaries today, but this is essentially just a chance to talk about who I am. Um, and it, uh, this is the, the edit view, so it doesn't show the whole thing, but I'm just pretty much reiterating my mission statement, and I'm saying these are the things I do, and I kind of go into, here's some of the ways I love to connect with you or partner with you. Your, your profile, your summary doesn't have to be extravagant or long. I'll show you some cool ones in a second. Again, if you've got a really nice resume, just port that profile in and kind of talk about some of the highlights of you, who you are, some of your core skills, some of your future ambitions. Um, but that's nice because that's the first thing people are going to look at to get a sense of who you are. From there, I'll scroll down. And what I want to show today is you can do a million things with your profile. You can customize it whatever way you want. So I've got my job here listing what I do with the business students. Um, and then I've got a number of little videos that I happen to put up there. I thought, you know what? I've got some videos. I often send people to my LinkedIn profile to access videos. I have actually a bunch of LinkedIn videos there too, uh, which would be worthwhile looking at afterwards. But that's just a nice thing. Some of you, you might have a video or you have a blog. I used to have my blog up here. Or you've got a really cool project, a capstone project you've done. Throw it up on your LinkedIn profile so that folks, when they look at your profile, they can get a sense of what you've done. In fact, let me show you, uh, I wasn't going to show you this one, but let me show you an example. One of, my st one of our students just did this um, the other day. And I was so proud. He did an awesome, um, Brayden's going into policy research. He's got a nice profile. He's a winner. Um, and then check it out. He's done, he's done some really cool, he's got this really neat industry analysis, multi-layered deal. And uh, he wants to show people he's good at research. So, He's got that up there. He also, in undergrad, had two master's theses, which happened to be up here as well. So somebody, he, this just turned from like a resume to his portfolio, right? It's his resume and his portfolio all in one. It looks kind of cool. So you can put projects up there, totally fine. Um, put all your experiences. You can go down and you can see folks give you recommendations. So I have recommendations from my past job. So let's say, um, I'm a recent grad and you come look at my profile as a recruiter or an employer and you go, you know what, this Daniel has all these fancy words in his resume, but I don't know, know, really know if he's legit. Then I look at his, your, my profile and you go, oh, here's Andy Brucia. Let me click on Andy's profile. Hmm. Andy seems like a legit guy. He's got some gray hair and the beard. He must be wise. And uh, oh, well, he's held real jobs. Oh, wow, he's got a degree, yada, yada. So, Andy seems like he's legit. Because Andy's legit, they have now inferred that to me because he's given me a recommendation. So that's a nice way to just boost up your profile. So again, it, it went from your resume to your resume, your portfolio, and your recommendations all in one place. That's awesome. 
So back to my profile. I'll scan through this really quickly. Number of positions. I've got my degrees. And not only do I have my degrees, I have every single stinking course I've ever taken here at SPU on my profile. Why? Shout it out. Somebody. Come again? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I actually took this class. I'm not just, you know, not just a, a vague degree. That's, one, that's a great reason. Another reason is because those are keywords that are going to make my profile pop up. In a, bit, in a bit, I'll show you how to look for profiles, and it's the exact same thing that recruiters do to look for you. So if somebody happens to type in uh, multivariate statistics and career transitions, I don't know why they'd pair those together, but if they did, I'd probably come up. And maybe they'd give me a call, right? So the more keywords you have in there, the better. I often tell students to list their, topic, their topics and courses. So list all the courses you take and maybe some of the key topics. That, that you studied as well, so that folks will find you and they get a sense of what you're about. Especially, especially if you have a degree like mine, industrial organizational psychology, and they go, what is that, witchcraft? No. <laughs> oh, leadership and team development. Oh, I kind of get that now. That makes a little more sense. Um, so put your education, put everything. Because I've been out a few years, my education's last. But for most of you, you can just put your education first. Like I think if I looked at Braden's, yeah, he's got his master's degree right up top and then his uh, uh, bachelor's degree under that. You can switch. I'm not going to show you how to do that, but you can switch any category around on your profile. Then I've got this, this, they've got this interesting thing called skills. It's, again, just a list of keywords. Career counseling for me, resume writing, leadership development. And when you put those up there, what's interesting is people will click them <laughs> and say that you have competencies in these areas. Now, this is kind of a bit of a gimmick, and I'll show you why. Um, because some of the folks on here, like I've, I've worked with Jill as a client. I've never worked with Sheila. But she knows me and she must have decided I was good at career counseling. Um, <laughs> if you have, so, but the point is, as, you, as you're coming out of school, you have skills, you have knowledge, you have content areas. Put those keywords in there so people can start to give you credit for them. Hopefully, they know you've actually, you actually have those skills. But it starts building up credibility. Um, and if you had a lot, you might even put this at the top of your profile. So when somebody scans through, they go, hey, I think you're credible because of this. Now, I keep mine lower because I think it's a gimmick. Um, but whatever. It's there. Um, got some personal details. Um, you can even put papers you've written, projects. Some of you do research presentations at conferences. Put it all. Put the whole thing on there. Um, got you all the recommendations, and then I have a bunch of groups. Now, this is a stinking long profile, right? And I don't expect most people to look through all of it, and that's okay. I typically say you can do more on your LinkedIn profile than you would with your resume. You can put a lot more content. My strategy is to, I just want to overwhelm people with, with things so they say I should, I should contact them and call them. I had someone reach out to me for a consulting gig recently, and they looked at my LinkedIn profile first. And again, I don't think they read the whole thing, but they just saw enough to say, you're worth calling. Yes. Um, some people put less content. They want to show everything really concisely. That's fine, too. There's no rule about how much or how little. I tend to put more because I want to overwhelm people with things. And I want lots of keywords so that people find me. Um, but really, the stuff at the top is what really matters. That's what people are going to look at the fastest. So let me show you a couple other profiles quickly. Uh, here's a mentor of mine, Ron McKenna, on campus. He's a great guy. I love his tagline, developing character, competence, and calling. I'd steal it if he didn't have it. He's got a, he's got a, his summary is his bio. I mean, so if you've got a bio, you can put it up there. I'll show you some others. Don't, they don't have to be that crazy, right? Um, but again, nice, clean headshot, experience, recommendations. You know, he's got projects in there. The guy does know about leadership development. I've actually endorsed him, and it's legit. Um, so again, you can see some of those things. His profile isn't nearly as long, but it doesn't have to be. It, it looks great. Let me show you Rachel, a student from SPU a couple years back. So she, she just took a different route. Her heading says business process analyst at Quorum Review. So she did more of a, here's what my title is, here's what I'm doing. Um, doesn't look like she had a professional headshot, but it's, it's really clean, it's really crisp, and I can totally recognize who she is. So that's fine, that's awesome. Um, she's got a nice summary. 
analytical skills, three years plus, project management, process improvement, technical skills. This is kind of like a nice bang, here's what I bring to a company type of deal, right? And she's a fairly recent grad. Um, for her, this is actually just lifted from her resume, just word for word, lifted from her resume, which is awesome. She's got her experience. She's been out a couple years now, so she decided to put experience first. She doesn't have to have a ton of content for each job. That's fine. Just by seeing business process analyst, I've got a sense of what she might do, and so does the hiring manager. So she doesn't have to have every detail in the world. She got a couple recommendations. Her experience doesn't just include professional experience. So she was a lab manager for uh, a professor in college. Awesome. She listed out under experience. She's legit. That's totally fine to do. You don't just have to list paid work or post-grad professional work. Anything you want. She's listed, again, here, topics and courses. So that those things will get, her, will get her pulled. She's mentioned her study abroad trips. All sorts of things. She's got some skills. That's her profile. It looks great. She's going to get a lot of people looking at it, right? Um, Braden, a couple years back as well. Similar thing, project manager at the company. He's got a nice little summary, and he's put a lot more keywords in. So he'll probably get pulled for some of these things if, if a recruiter is looking for him. Um, again, he has research assistant positions here at SPU, you, campaign he, he helped run, all sorts of things. Lots of content in his degrees. He even weaseled a recommendation out of me. <laughs> but he's an awesome guy. Um, you can see he's got every single one of his courses in there, so people pull those up. Um, he's not single anymore, ladies. I'm sorry. And you can laugh. It's OK. And he's following a bunch of companies. He's got a bunch of groups. So that kind of gives you a sense of what a really good profile looks like. It's got a nice picture. It's got a clear heading. It's got a vanity URL, so you can use it at a variety of places. It has um, a nice summary and content that's pretty much lifted off the resume, whether it be professional experience, work experience, being an RA, whatever, you ha whatever have you, volunteer, anything. List your education, all your courses, and get some recommendations. So it just looks credible. And if you can spice it up by putting some projects in there, that's even better if you have them. So let me move from what a good profile looks like, because I really think that if you have a good profile, that's just the bottom of the shelf what you need. But the best use of LinkedIn is to use LinkedIn to go find people. I've got a really great profile, I think, but I don't actually use my profile to attract people as much as I use my LinkedIn account to go find people. LinkedIn is a better hunting tool than an attraction tool. And I'll show you what I, what I mean by that. If you're being intentional where you want to go, you're talking to folks in a career center, you're talking to professors, you need to figure out where you want to go, and then LinkedIn just makes a snap to find people. So let me give you a couple quick examples. I'm going to show you my favorite feature, the advanced search tool, which is kind of hidden here, just kind of hanging out. LinkedIn takes all the cool features and hides them. Um, let's say I happen to be looking for a job. I go to Indeed.com, my favorite job search aggregator, and I see, ooh, marketing vendor analyst at Nordstrom. Nice. I would like to do that. That's my dream job, I've decided. So I want to I get in there. And I want to find out what it's like to do marketing at Nordstrom. So I'm going go to I'm gonna go to LinkedIn to profile how I had opened. I'm going to go to Advanced Search. And I'm going to go into Companies. I'm going to say Nordstrom. And I'm just going to search. I'm doing really simple searches today, just for examples. Um, on your own, you can make it really complex and cool. So, whoa, 80,000 people came up. That's overwhelming. Let's go to current. 80, who's currently working at Nordstrom? Probably half that, right? OK, 26,000. Still a ton. So I want to find maybe somebody with the words marketing. And I'll go to title. And I might say director. Or, yeah, let's say director. I want to find somebody who does marketing and has a, a director title at Nordstrom. I'm amazed that there's that many people. Um, and I'm not going to go through all of them just because, again, I, I'm, this is example. But just for sake of example, let's say that Stephanie, director of corporate marketing, I determine is either the hiring manager for that role or just somebody I'd love to learn about their career at Nordstrom and hear about marketing at Nordstrom. So I go look at Stephanie's profile. See what it's about, get a little sense of her background, where she went. 
And here's, here's the beautiful thing about it. It shows that I know Stephanie through Jim. Jim is an executive recruiter here in town who is really well respected. So here's what I'm going to do. I want to really connect to Stephanie. I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to click this neat little get introduced feature. And I'm going to write a note to Stephanie through Jim. Hi, Jim. This is Daniel. Been a while since we connected. Have you talked to Matt recently? How are things going? Blah, blah, blah. Touch base. You know, I noticed that you happen to be connected to Stephanie, and I think that she would be a great person to, for me to connect to. There's a marketing position I'm interested in at Nordstrom, and I don't know if she's a hiring manager or not, but I think she might have some good ad advice about how to compete for a job and really to make sure if I'm even the right fit. Would you be willing to connect to me? I'd love to just chat with her for even a couple minutes um, and, and, uh, and connect with her. So Jim, being a connection of mine, will then forward the connection to her, and she can choose to accept or decline. Hopefully, I've written a really nice, compelling message, making it easy for her to say yes and hard for her to say no. I've got some sample uh, messages in the PowerPoint deck later, so when Patty emails them out, you can, you can borrow those and, and, and tweak them. So all of a sudden, I can find Stephanie. Now, I could have gone to every single person in my, in my network one by one and said, you know anyone in marketing at Nordstrom? That would have taken me a year. LinkedIn did it in a fraction of a second. So it makes it really easy based on what you want to do. Um, another way I could have connected with Stephanie would have been, I might have just emailed Jim or given, given him a call and said, hey, Jim, saw LinkedIn, you're connected to Stephanie. You should be willing to connect us. So I might go through LinkedIn or I might go around LinkedIn. So the advanced search tool is one of my absolute favorites. Um, you can also search for school. I might search for Seattle Pacific University. So you see, who are all the alums at Nordstrom that way? That's one way I might, I might, I might find folks. Another way, I'll go to the uh, connections. I'll go to the alumni tool. There's this neat tool, uh, SPU comes up. And maybe I'll say, I want to find Nordstrom. And it's just going to show me the folks at Nordstrom, all 311 of them, who are, who are either at or have worked at Nord Nordstrom in some capacity. So that's awesome. These are folks I can reach out to, ranging from people who've been on the, on the floor to um, you know, senior um, leaders, right? And those are folks I can reach out to, I can connect to. And you're an alum when you reach out to them and you say, hi, I'm from SPU. There's just instant bond. You, know, you get questions like, what floor did you live on? <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah. Um, so the alumni tool is a great way, or the advanced search, finding SPU alums. You already have a network, a, a huge network of people who want to serve you, and they're excited to connect with you. It all depends on how do you reach out to them, how do you ask, and what do you ask, right? And those are some of the finesse things that folks in the career center can help guide you through. So those are a couple ways I'll use LinkedIn, the search tool, the alumni tool. Another one of my absolute favorite um, tools on LinkedIn is, are, are the groups. So I've gone here to the Seattle Pacific University School of Business, Government and Economics Network. Let me take a breath. But it's a great group. We've got over 1,200 members. And we've also got the, the general SP group here as well. And so here's what I might do. Let's say, again, imagine I hadn't done those other avenues to get to Nordstrom. I'm going to go to members. Because you can join as a member. I'll approve you if you have SP on your profile. If it loads up, anyone know any good jokes? Um, members, and I'm just going to type in Nordstrom. Again, I'm doing simplistic searches for example sake, but you can make them much more sophisticated. So 56 people came up, including Christopher Nordstrom. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> I think Chris actually has worked at Nordstrom too, so it's kind of an irony. Um, but I'm going to go down and see. I want to find someone who's currently at Nordstrom. So here's a site, Corner at Nordstrom. Oops, Amy. Here's a project lead. Here's a, pr a product manager. So I could go on and on. There are folks at Nordstrom. And here's what's cool. If I want to connect to Jeff as part of the group, I can just send a message to him directly. Just like that. Nice message. Hey, Jeff, I'm an eager SPU student who would love to learn everything I can from you. Of course, I'd like to talk to you. Awesome. Great. Let's, let's connect. Coffee. I'll buy it. So the groups are a really nice way to connect to folks. You can join groups for everything. There's SPU groups. There are groups for your discipline. I'm part of an industrial organizational psychologist group. So there's groups for literally anything you can think of. There's a group. Join them. 
Um, oftentimes, there's good discussions or posts. People post job leads. Um, I manage a group for my own alumni network, and we post job leads all the time for each other. Um, so that's a great thing to do, is, is use the groups. So if you are using LinkedIn, the, the key comes down to what do you want to do or where do you want to go? If you know what you're going towards, you can work your way back and find anybody from there, and then find a good reason to reach out to them. It's all your fingertips. The key becomes what do you want to do, and how are you going to reach out in a way that's respectful, honors people's time, um, and builds a relationship with them. Whenever I use LinkedIn, a few years back, um, I, had a, I did a workshop, and somebody came up to me afterwards and said, I've been using LinkedIn a ton, but I haven't been getting anywhere with it. And so I said, well, what are you doing? And he said, I'm just adding tons of connections. And I, so I asked, have you met with any of them? No. Well, then it's pointless. LinkedIn is just a tool. Relationships are where it's at. So if I, meet, if I met somebody, if I use LinkedIn to connect to an alum, I'm going to actually follow up with them and meet them in person or have a phone conversation at the very least, but ideally meet them in person. Because oftentimes, your resume might not be the greatest, but if you meet somebody who's an alum and they like you and you have a shared connection and you build rapport, you all of a sudden look a whole lot different to that person than a generic resume coming out of um, undergrad. right? And so it's all about building relationships. And whenever I, I use LinkedIn, I'll scout people's profiles ahead of time to get to know them a little bit. Because when I network, I don't want to just get something. I want to find ways to serve those people as well. And so if I see that um, Rachel, if I just kind of go down her profile, let's see, does she have uh, interest in here? Some people do, some people don't. Um, let's see if Rob does. Nope. Some people list their interests or causes there they, they care about. And I might see that and think, oh, I'm so glad I know that. I'm going to bring that up in a conversation. I'm going to find out why that matters to that person. And then maybe I'll find something to connect them to. I can tell them about an event coming up. I can connect them to somebody who can help them for their nonprofit. If nothing else, I can give them the time and appreciation of inquiring about what's important to them. So it's all about building relationships and finding ways to serve people. A quick example about this, there's an SPU alum I know who went through a workshop like this a long time ago. Um, and he's working at a mission organization right now. He recently came to me and said, hey, we're trying to figure out how this mission organization, um, we have a group in Nepal. He brought this guy from Nepal. He, we met at Tully's. And he goes, we're trying to figure out how to make a social enterprise in Nepal to create revenue to help the indigenous people there. Um, get some money because some of the um, agriculture was changing and they weren't getting the money they need to be able to feed their, fam their families. So how cool is it? I was able to connect him to four SPU alums who have been looking for something like this. In the next month, they are going on a 10-day Sherpa-led trip through Nepal to assess the capabilities and help them build a business plan. How cool is that? So did I gain something from that? No. Um, do I need to and now in the future? I really don't care. But I'm super jazzed that that SP alum with those other SP alums are able to connect together, use their gifts and talents to do something for other people. Right? So at the end of the day, building relationships opens up doors for things to happen, um, for you to serve others. So that's, that's really what these tools are getting towards. Um, so how do you reach out to people? What do you say? Here, here's some of the... Uh, core things that I, I, I found really make the difference. The first is draft a really thoughtful message. Look at their profile. I mean, it's easy to find people once you get the hang of the tool, and I'll give you some videos afterwards you can look at. Um, draft a really thoughtful message. Look at their background. What do you have in common? What is interesting about them? What are they passionate about? A gentleman who's my mentor, the first time he and I met, I found out through his LinkedIn profile, we both like mixed martial arts, and we had a fun little geek out conversation about that before we got down to career stuff. right? So draft a thoughtful message. Like I said earlier, make it easy for them to say yes and hard for them to say no. Hi, I'm a student at SPU. In my junior year, in my senior year, I'm really interested in exploring career paths like this. Based on your LinkedIn profile, I think you're the coolest person who's ever walked the face of the earth since Jesus. <laughs> And my mom, sorry mom, right? So, okay, so you, you honor them, you respect them, you tell them something, I'm really interested in connecting with you, would you be open to meeting with me 
20 to 30 minutes. I've just got a few questions. I think I could gain so much from you. Willing to meet at your convenience and I'll buy coffee. Of course they will. In fact, it turns out I'll be the highlight of their day. So draft a thoughtful message. Always be personal, so direct at the specific things you learn about them. LinkedIn, at the very bottom, will tell you what their preferences, preferences are. So some people don't want to be contacted out of the blue, so you respect that. Other people are totally open, so I always just look on their profile, make sure what they're open to. And it's all about quality over quantity. So find a number of folks you think you'd really want to get to know and deepen a relationship with, rather than just trying to add tons of people. That's useless. Absolutely useless. And have a good reason to connect. Um, I'll get LinkedIn requests or networking requests all the time, and some of them are super generic. And I just ignore them. I want a good reason. Being an SP alum, and an SP alum is a great reason. right? So think of something creative that's going to connect. And like I said, set up a meeting, meet them in person, have a conversation. That's where things really happen. So here's a sample of a message. I won't read it, but it's, it's there. Um, so with that, I'm going to leave a couple, a couple uh, minutes for questions. Um, but let me just keep, kind of give you a couple of the quick takeaways. I use the hard skills of being able to look for people. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the soft skills. How are you going to reach out? How are you going to connect? How are you going to respect people? That's, those are the keys. I really encourage you, optimize your resume. Build a fantastic resume. And it makes building a LinkedIn profile really easy. And again, there are folks at the Career Center here just standing by waiting to help you. Use LinkedIn to hunt for people. So make it good enough, and then use LinkedIn to go find people and proactively build relationships. In fact, I know an uh, owner of a consulting firm who are here recently who intentionally, and this is not uncommon, she rewards people who reach out proactively because she assumes that that is how they're going to work for her. The way they reach out and proactively go after things rather than waiting for it to come to them is how she assumes they're going to work for her. Whenever I speak, it's amazing to see, and I see this when other people speak too, there usually be one or two people who follow up with you. Um, and it should be, the entire class does, and the guest speaker should be overwhelmed and go, I can't come back to SPU again because 100 people are going to reach out to me. Right? Usually it's one person. I have people say all the time, in fact, I know a guy who's a chief HR officer at a large company locally, and he said he tells this to groups probably about 20 times a year. And he says every year maybe two college grads follow up with him, and then he helps them get jobs. So follow up with people. Use LinkedIn to hunt and go and build a relationship. Add value to your network by looking for ways to serve them and enrich their lives, and then meet people in person. So with that, let me open up to any questions, and then uh, we can go from there. Questions, comments, rude remarks? <laughs> Aha. Yeah. I have a question I hate to take away from students' time because I'm faculty and I'm not looking for a job, but my husband is. It all applies to students. It all applies. <laughs> <laughs> so he's noticed that there's always a job poster. So he posts the job and um, he's wondering, can, you know, already 63 people have applied for a job he's looking to apply to. Mm. And does he... Does he contact this person, or does this person kind of want to be left alone? Does he job posters in? Do you write somebody personally, dear, or do you say, dear hiring manager? Or do you say, yeah. hey, this is the guy posting the job, I'm going to write, dear Patrick? This does apply to everybody. I'll, I'll make it tangible for the students here. I went to the jobs tab, a feature I did not show you, um, just for time's sake. They have another little advanced search. I'm going to click, I'm just going to look for, um, for all of you. A junior level position. Let's make this real and tangible. Experience level, entry level. Boom. And let's do this zip code. Let's find a position I would like to apply for as the eager, super intelligent SPU grads that you are. So let's say um, I'm, just, I'm just making this up. I want to apply for, uh, oh goodness, staff accountant. Let's see if somebody has their. Their, 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 their position posted. This one doesn't. Uh, oftentimes in the corner right up here, they'll have the person who posted it, and you'll have their profile. If they've posted a position, yeah, it's fair game to reach out. In fact, I would, because if 63 people have applied, I want to stand out. I'm probably going to apply online. I'm going to send them a note, and I might even give them a phone call and just say, just left you a note, just want to just mention who I am. 
I know you're busy, thought I'd introduce myself. This is, these are the reasons I think I'd be a good fit. Typically, the people who are more, more proactive, um, so an example, when I used to work at Microsoft, we had really strict processes for recruiting. Um, and we, made, we wanted to make sure everyone went through the job application process. But if somebody came to a manager and the manager forwarded the resume to me, we would interview that person right away and we would kind of expedite the process. So totally game, fine to do. Um, yeah, I, some people will have issues with it, but overall, 90% of the time, you be proactive, you get rewarded for it. <laughs> Being really simplistic there, there's more nuances, but yeah, I would, I would reach out to folks directly. Yeah, Carrie. Just to follow up on your question about being very personal in your introduction or your, you know, as you're sending something to somebody, do you say hiring manager or recruiter? Or do you say you person's first name? Oh, yeah, if I, have, if I have their name there, I'll use their name. Okay, is, is there kind of a rule of thumb these days about if, whether using someone's first name is too or Gosh, I'll, maybe some of my cursor folks can back me up here. From what I've seen, Seattle's a fairly casual city, so I think using first name typically works well. Um, yeah, I, th I think you're probably game fair to use first name. Great, great question. Yeah, Ben. On the aesthetics note, I noticed that one of the new features in LinkedIn is a background or like a mm. color, similar to Facebook. Any suggestions on if that should be utilized in it? Oh, yeah, I think I can't think of any one of my students who's, who just recently did that. Uh, yes, I haven't done that yet. Um, if you want to use the aesthetics feature and have a background, sure. Here's my sense for anything, and actually this goes to if you want to use a portfolio piece or add anything to your profile other than content. Actually, even the content. Make sure it's relevant. So, you know, I wouldn't just put a random background. Like, I wouldn't put a background with my kids. You know what I mean? That wouldn't be professional, even though I love them. Um, so yeah, as long as it's professional, if you put a portfolio piece up and it's relevant, somebody asked me at a, a LinkedIn workshop yesterday, can, can you put a video up? And I showed mine, I said, yeah, as long as it's a relevant video. You know, I wouldn't have the video of you, know, you spoons on your nose, but you know, something relevant, sure. But yeah, if you, if you want to do that, makes it look a little different, go for it. Great question, Ben. Yeah. Um, recently on LinkedIn, I was asked by someone, a recruiter, to connect but I have no idea who this person is when I looked at their account profile. It didn't seem legit. What is a good rule of thumb for that? Yeah. So in uh, there's two questions I'll answer. The first one is, what do you do when random people connect to you? Um, typically, I, I do one of two things. I just ignore them. Um, unless, because again, I'll get these random messages that just say, I'd like to add you on LinkedIn. I have no clue who the person is. And I have no clue who, why they want to connect with me. And I don't want to uh, give them access to my, to my connections, uh, my relationships. So in that case, I'll, I'll just usually reject them. My exception is if I'll see something like that, like a recruiter. So a couple years back, a woman from a company I'd been really trying to connect with for our students for a long time uh, from Google <laughs> reached, just added me randomly. And I thought, ah, oh, shucks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept this one. Well, I, I didn't just accept it. I accepted it. And I sent her a note back right away saying, thanks for adding me. I typically like to have a personal relationship with people in my network. Would you open, open to a phone conversation or coffee? We grab coffee and she's come to classes and been engaged here, which has been nice. So in that case, try to bring it to something personal. Um, if it looks like they're, they're not legit and they're just kind of you know, fishing for stuff, then I just reject it. Uh, recruiters range from really good to really bad. But oftentimes, more often than not, I mean, I, in that case, I'd, I'd, if it looks like they're legitimate, I'd add them. And I'd send a note back saying, love to chat for a couple minutes, see if I can help you in any way, or if you have positions I'd be a good fit for, and see where it goes from there, and test it out. Worst come to worst, you can drop their connection later. Great question. Let's take one more question, and then I, I think uh, I'll let Patty transition us. Yeah? Um, with that, can you, know, like, on me, you can say, oh, mutual friends with someone, like, tries to add you, and like, how about you? Can it happen through this, like, say, I don't know who you are, mm -hmm. but someone's saying, oh, Taylor would be good if you want to add her. Can I see our mutual contacts before I accept you? Uh, yes, I think, well, if you clicked on their, you'd have to click on their profile. Okay. If you clicked on their profile, then you'd be able to see their mutual contacts. Okay. And then you can decide if you wanted to or not. Yeah, great, great question. So with that, let me wrap up by just saying, um, I'd encourage you to get on LinkedIn, if you, uh, for most of you are. Really optimize your profile. 
I'm going to send this up. It's on my LinkedIn profile as well. There's a number of videos, a little screencast I put together that pretty much cover everything I said today, but in much finer grain detail, and you can watch it again. So free, feel free to go to those or share them. I've put those available for people so that they can be useful. So thank you so much. If you see me on campus, I'm usually running around, but say hi. <laughs> go to the Career Center and go to as many sessions as you can this week. It'll make a huge difference in your transition from school. So thank you so much.